air emergency and the way ahead and dr sunita narayan to talk to us and dr uh, narayan of course needs no introduction either to a audience nationally or even internationally she is you know uh, very well known and uh, uh, in in this area of the environment and she combines you know a uh, passion and zeal for the subject as well as a very scientific rigor and approach which perhaps is the best uh, combination in any field and uh, without much ado i will then request uh, dr you. narayan to uh, speak on the air emergency the way ahead which i'm yeah. sure all of us are very uh, concerned about and uh, i think the format is that you will speak about 30 40 minutes 30 minutes i thought i'll keep it try and keep it short because i can see a lot, lot of, of faces questions and a lot of questions and i'd rather have a conversation yeah. so what i'll do is i'll try and go through the big i mean everybody is dealing with air everybody is breathing it so i just i thought i'd just give a broad overview in terms of where we are what have we It's done already. what needs to be done and then i can sort of um i think for most of us who live in delhi the story is known um chal raha hmm. um this is not the first time that we have actually come to realize that we have an air emergency some of us um, are probably too young to remember it but i am certainly very old so i remember it and i was very much part of that at that time as well um in the mid 90s um, the air was really thick with black smoke in fact when i compare the air of the 90s to now i can tell you it was much worse it was actually because it was black particulates that we had um in the air which we were breathing except that the science of air pollution was not known at that time and when csc raised the issue of particulate pollution um in fact tata motors took us to court uh, filed a 100 crore defamation suit against us saying that there was no evidence that diesel particulates were carcinogenic that there was no evidence that small particulates actually were dangerous for our health and but that was the 90s okay that was the time when the air pollution issue was just beginning to take off and what we proposed at that time was that instead of delhi thinking about taking incremental steps to clean up our fuel to clean up the quality of the emission standards in our vehicles we needed to do a leap frog and that is where we proposed cng cng came as an answer as a leap frog saying that if you took the bs1 bs2 bs3 or euro1 euro2 euro3 route we would take another 20 years to catch up and that would be just too late changing the fuel gave us much cleaner emissions and so that was the route that we pushed for and as you all know it was very contentious uh, i remember every time we went to court on those days when the issue was being discussed invariably at night a bus would burn i mean it reached a point of such farce that even the judges said you know i do you really think that we are so stupid that you know just the night before we are going to listen to this case a bus burns and you tell us that cng is such an experimental fuel it's never been tried it's never been tested and so it is not possible to do but delhi did it and i think we should have some um we should take some courage from it because from what i'm going to tell you we need a lot of it for the future and we took that courage we took the transformation and as a result of it we managed to clean up our air and we have data to show that the air did clean in the period of the early 2000 uh but today and that was the past today is what we should talk about pollution is back with a vengeance okay and let's also be clear and this is a constant debate i have and i will try and explain that and i hope if anyone has for the questions on it let's be very clear pollution is worst in winter but it does not mean that there is no pollution through the year the sources of pollution remain the same other than stubble burning which happens for a month in winter but it is the fact that you have winter sets in inversion happens the cold air means that 
the, the particulates settle, moisture in the air, like today's rain, not enough to wash it off, but enough moisture in the air that you get particulates to actually sit on you. You can't breathe. We suffocate and we are outraged, and rightly so. And that's the winter pollution that we are dealing with today. The sources of pollution, and this is why it's important to understand, these remain constant through the year. There is also no rocket science to this. The sources of pollution, and there are three studies, two study, three studies in <coughs> Delhi which have inventorized pollution. There is an IIT Kanpur study which was done in the period of uh, uh, somewhere in the decade of 2000, uh, 2011, we got that study. There is a Terry study, Terry ARAI study, and then there is the Suffer IITM study. Now, I believe, I mean, we can all have our biases. I am very clear that the Suffer IITM study from everything I've seen is the most rigorous. They've also updated their emission inventory, so we get more up-to-date data. But let's not quibble about it, because if Terry says that vehicles contribute about 30% and Suffer says it's 40%, the fact is it's still very large. Okay. So the only difference between the two studies is really the contribution of vehicles to the total pollution. Otherwise, there's not really much difference. And the sources of pollution are transport and industry, two of your biggest sources. Combine that with suspended dust. And I do want to make the point to you that suspended dust per se is not a pollutant. If it was, then you would argue that parts of Rajasthan are the most polluted in the world. It is dust coated with emissions from combustion sources. So what makes dust toxic is power plants, industrial pollution, vehicles. So that is what makes dust and the dust we breathe, which is, um, becomes toxic. Then, of course, there is now new sources of pollution, things that were not anticipated as much. And one of them is garbage burning. That is turning out to be one of our biggest sources of pollution, um, not in terms of contribution, total contribution, but in terms of local air pollution that we are beginning to see. So keep this in mind, transport, industry, power, to some extent, residential, which is biomass burning, uh, suspended dust, and the rest are minor that are there. Now, winter is obviously the worst. And that's why we're all here today. Otherwise, I'm sure if uh, IHC was to host the NEET, you would organize the same thing in uh, May or June. Nobody is going to come. Pollution's not the burning issue then. But it chokes us today. And rightly so, we are so angry. But the fact is that we need to understand that the role of crop burning is episodal. It is about a period of time in the entire year. And it is completely wrong to blame that for pollution that we see through the year or pollution that we see even in winter, through winter. But yes, it plays a very big role in that one month. Why? Because the farmers burn stubble post the harvesting of paddy. The total contribution that Suffer puts out and has done a very good job in giving us that data, ranges from 5%, 3%, but it can go up to 35 to even 40%, depending on the wind direction. Now, the problem is, and this is why it, it is really a problem, that we already have local sources of pollution. Combined on top of that, we get adverse weather, no wind, no dispersion, of pollutants that is happening, moisture in the air, cold is settling in, and that's when the farmers are also burning. That's why it becomes so deadly. And that comes right after Diwali. So we've already, in fact, the data that we have for this year, the at five o'clock on the night of Diwali, Delhi was in green, which means that our air quality was actually good. At one o'clock at the night of Diwali, we went into very poor. 
There was a 10 times increase in the pollutant level in that one night. Now, right after that, the wind stopped and crop burning came in. And that's where it became that toxic cocktail that we all were absolutely so angry about. So if you look at this, this is the data. And if you look at it, 30th of this year, the contribution went up to 44%. Now, Diwali was 27th, if I remember right, 26, 27. So just after Diwali came that peak when the winds brought in all the crop burning into the city. Look at it in this graph, and you will see very clearly, this is from the 25th on to the 5th of November. Just look at the way emissions have accumulated in that period. Okay, go back and just compare it. You'll see, same period, 25th, it slowly starts adding up. Now, the other problem is, and if you look at that bottom, the green line shows you the wind velocity. The wind went up, if you remember, on the 7th or something, and you had that dispersion that took place. Then wind died again. Now, the good thing is that under the graded response action plan, certain emergency actions were taken. As a result of it, there was some stabilization. This is, and please understand, and I want to make this point clear because I often see there is some confusion in the media on what is GRAP for. GRAP is only an action plan for emergency action. We had designed it. Uh, we took this matter to the Supreme Court asking for a GRAP based on the experience of countries like China and Mexico, where when the pollution level rises and when it reaches a particular point of what we call severe or severe plus or very poor, certain actions kick in automatically. And we did this because if you remember two years ago when the smog episode had happened, everybody was just looking around to say, what do we do? What do we do? So we said, let's at least codify it. Now you can make that code, you can make the actions more stringent, you can make them more, um, you can take the action earlier. For instance, this year, we took action on GRAP 15 days before the pollution episode started. We brought in certain steps as a preemptive action to see if, we, if that would help. So, and this year we also brought in and uh, the Pollution Control Board as a CPCB, the task force recommended, and rightly so, that all industry using coal should be banned. That's not in GRAP, but it was introduced. So the court has also allowed for more stricter stringent action to happen, which is something that can be brought in. But the point I also want to make, and I'm laboring on this a little bit, but I want to make this point is, what worries me is, in this period, we did not have clean air at all. It was very, very polluted, okay? <laughs> but in the period that you see when, my, when we have put emergency measures were introduced, everything was stopped. Construction was banned. Generator steps had been banned earlier. Power station in Delhi had already been closed. Construction was banned. Truck entry, and I will explain to you, has already come down. Um, um, industry was closed down. Uh, we even had um, the odd and even scheme of the government, of the Delhi government in place at that time. And yet pollution was so high. The point that this should tell us is the scale of the action we still need to take. That even when you shut down a city, the only thing we didn't do was to say nobody should come out of their homes. I mean, odd and even was a partial attempt to say come out only if you have a particular kind of car. Of course, it had too many exemptions, which has been our problems with odd and even. But the larger point I just want to leave with you is the scale of the problem, which requires a scale of response. Because if so much is shut, and even then pollution is high, we need to understand how much more we need to do. But let's understand what has happened. Because I also want to say, I mean, I came to this forum, Sunit, you won't know this, but this is, of course, Ishar bullied me to come. But 
Ishar can bully anyone to do anything. But I also came because I have been coming almost every year other than last year. And it's been like a report card to say what has happened, what needs to happen. Now, two years ago when I came, if any one of you were present at that time, I had listed a lot of things that needed to happen. And actually, I want to report back to you that a lot has happened in this two-year period. What has happened? One, and this was a very contentious fight. When I write this, it seems so simple, but I can tell you it's taken us months and months of fights with the most powerful people in this country to be able to get these actions. First, the government has agreed to leapfrog from BS4 directly to BS6. More than that, we have got a Supreme Court ruling, and this has been a very contentious ruling, but we've got a ruling from the court that this transition was ha will happen from the 1st of April 2020. Car industries wanted a six-month leeway for them to sell their old stocks and make the transition into BS6. The Supreme Court has said no, it will happen from 1st of April 2020. Clean fuel, which is BS6 fuel, is already available in Delhi, one year ahead of schedule, and now is available also in NCR. But remember, this time, the big, big impact, pollution impact will come, not because of the improvement in fuel, but in the improvement of vehicles, which means that we also have to work very hard to get rid of older vehicles now because that's where the real impact will come. When we moved from BS3 to 4, we went from 350 ppm of sulfur to 50 ppm of sulfur. So big impact. But now we are going from 50 ppm of sulfur to 10 ppm of sulfur. So the impact is not coming because of the quality of fuel. The impact will come because the vehicles are 90% cleaner. So from BS4 to BS6, diesel vehicles will be 90% cleaner. Now that's big, but that also means, and that's where my colleagues are now obsessed about, is that we don't want the Volkswagen scam in India. So we have to make sure that we have on-road vehicles which are as clean as when they left the factory. But that's the next part of the challenge. We have also, to some extent, disincentivized diesel fuel vehicles. The government has reduced the price differential, and uh, there have been some, um, um, uh, an NGT in this case, not, uh, not EPCA, but NGT has reduced the age limit on diesel vehicles. All coal-based power plants in Delhi have been shut permanently. The closure of Badarpur took us three years, but it is a very big, um, very big move ahead to shut Badarpur. Uh, we've also opened Bhavana power plant, which is a gas-based power plant, with the aim that if you shut coal and move to gas, it will make the transition much better. But we still have power plants in Dadri and Jhajjar and Panipat, which are in the immediate NCR, which require to get cleaner. They need to get emission standards um, uh, introduced. Another big fight, and in fact, I was just saying, I have another quote report to give to court tomorrow because uh, steel industry now wants uh, to dilute this further is to get a ban on pet coke and furnace soil use in the region and pet coke imports have been banned other than for five industries which use it for feedstock. Now there is huge pressure to open up the import of pet coke to all industries. And that is something that we all have to resist and fight against. All coal use in Delhi has been banned. This is big. This is really big. So coal use in Delhi is banned completely. It is allowed in Sahib Baba. It is allowed in Faridabad. It is allowed in Gurgaon because the approved fuel notification that the state of Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, and Rajasthan have come up with has included coal as an approved fuel. Something we are fighting against, but it is a very tough battle because all Delhi industry has moved to Sai Babad, forgetting that it's the same airshed. Okay? The other big one has been the truck entry into Delhi, has, which has been the most polluting category of vehicles, large. And every year we would find that in winter, 
nighttime pollution would be much higher because when there was entry of trucks. Now we've got a court order which has got an environment compensation charge on every truck entering Delhi. But for the last two years, we've been struggling because cash-based taxation systems are very open to all leakages. So now at 13 entry points into Delhi, which is about 80% of the traffic coming in, is all cashless based on RFID systems. So the integrity of the transactions has gone up. And we are finding that truck traffic from these, from right now from these has come down to 4,000 a night, where the total truck traffic into Delhi was 40,000 a night. So huge difference, partly because of the building of the expressways, which you have to give credit to the government that um, these two expressways were stuck. The Supreme Court had ordered them in 2005. They finally got built last year. First time we are seeing the impact of that. So a lot has happened. And I wanted to say this because often we are so cynical that we really believe nothing is happening. And rightly so, we should be cynical, we should be angry, but we should also recognize when action has happened, but recognize also what we need to do further. Now, the good news is, and this is what my colleagues have been putting together, that there is a bending of the curve because of so much that has happened. So much has happened. There is a bending of the curve. There is a stabilization and a bending of the curve. We are showing that overall in the last year, it's about a 25% reduction in pollution, but the story is not that. The story is that we need to do 65% more. So when the Delhi government takes out ads saying that Delhi is clean, 25% reduction, the big line there is we still have 65% to do. Okay, That's what we need to keep in focus because that's the challenge right now. Now, the agenda right now and for what I call our right to blue skies and clear lungs is threefold. Mobility transformation, and I'm using that word very carefully, fuel use transformation, and then of course, managing enforcement of local sources. Those are your three biggest challenges if we want clean air. So what do I mean by this? Firstly, I mean that we need scale. I talked about this earlier. When CNG, we introduced CNG, it was scale. 100,000 vehicles converted to clean fuel in two years. 100,000. Okay? And more than that, these were all public transport vehicles. And just look at the difference. So we have fewer public transport vehicles. We have only one lakh auto rickshaws in the city of Delhi. But auto rickshaws travel about 200 kilometers a day. So do buses, as compared to, and taxis do 300 kilometers a day, as compared to the millions of private transport that we have, which still do limited mileage in terms of movement every day. So when you're looking at pollution, you also try and clean up first the gross polluting vehicles. The scaling is important because if we can't get rid of all of us on cars, we are in trouble, but that's but the most important thing is to clean up the gross polluting. That's what we did. So we had impact. And the point that I just want to make is you cannot do handle pollution, what we are calling at CSC the third generation reform with small steps. So what do I mean by this? One, mobility transformation. CSC and we very strongly believe that we cannot afford a model of first polluting and then cleaning up. Today, only 20% of people in Delhi, less than that in all other cities, actually drive cars. But cars take up 90% of the road space and roads take up 26% of the land area of the city of Delhi. Roads and all take up and flyovers take up more space than even the green areas that we have in a city. So the question that you, we have to ask is, do we have the remaining road space or air shed for 80% of the people to get into the car? 
If we are already congested, we are already polluted, we are just meeting the needs of 20% of the city's commuting population. Do we actually have the road space or the air shed for the rest? But the opportunity is mobility transformation, which means you don't first get into a car and then get people into cycles but you actually get the people in cycles to metro and cycles and walk. So you keep the very large proportion. We do this because we are poor today, where we have invisible people who die the most in road accidents, who are cyclists and pedestrians. We don't make our cities which for pedestrians and for cyclists. But the fact is, if we want clean air, then we will have to reinvent the way we build our city roads as well. We will have to prioritize the needs of the cyclists, the walkers, because that's where we will get last mile connectivity with public transport. But the most important challenge, and this is something I really want to leave with you, is that this is easier said than done. Because in our context, in a cities like us, we are talking about a challenge of public transport where we need it to be affordable for the poor. And when I say this, I want you to have no illusions about the poor in this country. Please have no illusions that people are very, very poor in this city of Delhi. They cannot even afford to take a bus. Therefore, they cycle or they walk. Okay. So therefore, you need affordability of public transport, so affordable that the poor can ride in it. The two-wheeler is the cheapest form of public transport. You need to get your public transport, uh, your private transport. Public transport will have to compete with the two-wheeler. And yet, it will have to be safe, modern, big enough for you and me to take it. So we need a system which is designed for the rich and the poor. Never been done in the world. Because all other cities of the world which have designed public transport have been much more homogeneous. They've been far more equitable. They do not have such a problem of such high richness and such more poverty. But that's the scaling we need. We have no option. So that's really what we need to think about. Now, what has happened? As I said, we have, I, I missed that point. I just want to tell you, we have something called the Comprehensive Air Plan, which uh, the Supreme Court asked the Ministry of Environment to do. We worked on it with them. The Comprehensive Air Plan has been notified by the government. I try and get things notified only because once they get some legal basis, it's easier to move action. So the cap has been notified. Now, under the cap in public transport, these are the actions, priority actions that need to be taken. We need to augment our bus fleet. Um, very little happening. The matter is in court. Uh, the Delhi government is filing reports to court. It has assured the Supreme Court that it will have 2,000 new buses by February. But the challenge is we need a total of 10,000 buses. We have an aging bus fleet already. We're going to have as many buses we introduce, we will be taking those many buses off the road. We also need to augment the metro so that there's increased ridership. Um, EPCA actually filed a report to SC asking for the clearance of phase four metro, which has finally been done because it, it was caught in a year. For two years, it was caught in a squabble between the central government and Delhi government on the question of pricing, on the issue of uh, uh, sharing of taxes or whatever else. So finally, we filed a report in July and this matter was cleared. We also got a similar thing done for the rapid rail transit coming from Meerut to Delhi, Panipat to Delhi, also caught in a squabble between the central government and the Delhi government. You have to plan deliberately for last mile connectivity. This is going to be a very important part of the redesign. You cannot have a bus and then not cross the road. You cannot take a metro and not be able to walk. I mean, I keep saying CSC's office in Tuklakabad, we have a metro station in Saket, another one in Kailash Colony, anywhere else in the world I would have walked to work. 
But from Saket coming through the Republic of Kanpur, because it is a Republic of Kanpur, okay? Okay, I could not work after that, nor could anyone else. So we need to have last mile connectivity uh, at scale and in a way that we can all actually take public transport easily. We need to plan for NCR connectivity, Gurgaon, Delhi, Faridabad, Delhi. I mean, this whole region has boomed, but we have never thought of connectivity. There has been an NCR planning board. Actually, it's a member of, F of IHC. It's uh, one of our colleagues. They've done excellent reports on public transport connectivity in the NCR. Nobody ever takes it forward, but that has to be part of our agenda to plan for. We also have to restrain private transport. And one of the ways to restrain private transport is one, that you incentivize public transport. The other is you make private transport so expensive to take. It's done all over the world. New York charges for parking. We finally um, have managed to get a parking policy notified for the city of Delhi this year. It has come after a whole year of a very bitter fight, but we have lost a very crucial part of that battle where the Delhi government has refused to notify the residential rates for parking, which means that there is no rate, no price will be put on the parking outside people's homes, no regulation will be done over there. Now that is something that I think is something we will fight. We have, we have got a I, 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 we don't give up, so I haven't sort of closed the door on it. We have agreed with the Supreme Court that we'll do three pilot projects and come back to court. I'm hoping by then elections will be over, the mood will be different, and we can actually get this done. Now, this will lead to middle class outrage, and I'm putting it very clearly to all of you, because every time we talk about pollution, we talk about the farmers, but we don't want to talk about our own cars and the fact that we'll have to pay for it and that we cannot use diesel SUVs, okay? And that has to be part of also something that we understand and we talk about. Because otherwise, this middle class outrage will only take us that far in winter and it's not going to get us clean air as we want. So hopefully this will happen. The other big battle which we are not winning right now, and that's something I'm seriously working on, what are our options, is a clean fuel transition. So we banned pet coke, which is 75,000 ppm of sulfur, really bad. And please understand why was India getting pet coke? Because US and China and Saudi Arabia produce vast quantities of pet coke, do not use it domestically because it is a really dirty fuel. They export it. Earlier, China was buying it. China put a stop on it. We became the mecca of pet coke. Okay. Now, there is a ban on the use of pet coke in this region, which is really, really important, but there is no ban on the use of coal. So even though coal is not as polluting as pet coke, it's only relative. The fact is we cannot, the industries have pollution control standards, but they cannot apply them. Nobody can monitor them. Just go out to Sahibabad, Faridabad, Ghaziabad, Gurgaon, Sonipat, Panipat, uh, and just see the chimneys and the stacks that are coming out, the pollution that is coming out. We have to do something about this. Now, the only way to do this, which is what China has done, how has Beijing cleaned up? Beijing has cleaned up because it has moved all its residential and industry to gas to natural gas, or you move them to electricity, but then electricity must come from clean power plants. That's the way to clean up the air. Now, when you look at, and this is an economic issue, it's a straightforward economic issue, and you will understand this Alokji much better than I will, and I'm just appalled at it, okay? Gas is taxed at 40% in this country, natural gas. So we have a very strange provision in which gas that comes via Gujarat, because all gas comes via Gujarat, it docks in, I don't remember the, um, 
Khandla. That's right. No, Khandla is in Gujarat, yeah. Okay, wherever. It docks in, uh, it has this large LNG station there. Oran, Oran. Oran is in Maharashtra, I'll remember. It's got a large LNG station there, built very rightly so by the Gujarat government, GPCB. As a result of it, they put a 15% tax on all gas that, trans that is transported via Gujarat. And then when you combine all the other taxation on top of it, it totals up to 40% tax on gas. The only reason CNG is cheaper in Delhi is because we have a 0% VAT. But it's not there for natural gas. Okay? Then the other combined problem with natural gas is it's not in GST. And because it's not in GST, industry gets no credit for using that gas. Now, as a result of it, and just understand the economics of this, I coal import, I thought was 18 rupees um, a kg. My colleagues tell me it's actually down to 8 rupees a kg. It's coming straight from Indonesia. It comes to the Adani port. People phone up, and they've done it in front of me, phone up and say, itta coal bhej dena. And it comes to Sahibabad over here. Okay? You're getting massive quantities import of imported pet co uh, coal in this region at eight rupees. Gas is at 43 rupees. Now industry tells us, we've been closing industry down in winter more as a way to sort of chabi lagao to say also, ki dekho, tum band karo jaoge winter mein. Why don't you move to gas? Why don't you just learn to, you know, then you will have no regulatory pressure on you. They say, how can we even think about it? We will just have to move out. Now, either you do this across India, otherwise, how does NCR industry move to 43 rupees for energy versus 8 rupees that the rest of India is getting, even cheaper, because they are allowed to use pet coke? So this is becoming a conundrum which we are just not able to sort out. We're looking at all the options. But unless we ban the use of coal in this region, I cannot see how industrial pollution is going to come down. We, in fact, have been appalled this winter. How many of you live in Gurgaon? Not many of you. Oh, quite a few. OK. So let me tell you the Gurgaon story, because all people in Gurgaon should be worried about the quality of their air. Now, when we put a ban on diesel generator sets, it's part of GRAP. So for two years, it was enforced in Delhi because we were told that, you know, we'll do it gradually. This year, we said enough is enough. The ban on diesel generator sets applies not just to Delhi, but across NCR. You will not believe this when I tell you. <laughs> All of developer Gurgaon, from all of DLF to all of Ansel to all of all the other big developers are only running on diesel generator sets. The minute we got and we put this ban, the first people who come to us are NASCOM. All the multinationals, are hum kaise survive karenge, hume to diesel generator chahiye, uske bina hum kuch nahi kar sakte. The Haryana government comes and says the entire Gurgaon will be in blackness, will be in darkness if you apply this. Now, I mean, don't people in Gurgaon have the right to clean air? Is this a choice? I mean, I think people in Gurgaon should make a choice. We live in Delhi, this man is enforced quite stringently. If there is a ban on diesel generator sets in winter and your light goes off, you're not allowed to use it. Why not in Gurgaon? Why not in Noida? Why not in Greater Noida? How can you have an electricity system which is so broken that nobody can get supplied electricity? And the tale we are told now is when Gurgaon was developing, the developers set up their own DG generator sets. Today, they have no interest in moving to the Haryana Electricity Board uh, uh, power. They are charging 18 rupees a unit, whereas um, Electricity Board charges much less. 
but they are making a certain profit. That's what we are told. I don't know if it's correct or wrong, but just un understand this is happening under our very noses. And for people who live in Gurgaon, please go and check in your own colony today or tomorrow, where does your electricity come from? Whatever. But they tell us that they are unreliable. The Haryana board tells us they are reliable. The fact is somebody has to fix this. You want clean air or you don't want clean air? I know. Only very limited areas we've given you a very clear. Con only very limited areas. A large part of Haryana is still a Gurgaon. All the residential colonies are still completely dependent on DG set. I have a list of the residential colonies. I'm going to make it public one of, one of these days. It's across all sectors, 1 to 57. Let me finish this. Two more slides to go. I'm over, then we can open it up. Okay, my last point, and this is the Achilles heel of India, <clears throat> is deterrence and enforcement. We have to improve this. The good thing is that we have, and let me show you this, CSC, what we did was we identified these 13 hotspots. So what are hotspots? Where the average pollution is even higher than Delhi's own average pollution, which itself is very high. So which means that you're really talking about something which is really, really bad. Now, this, these hotspots require action. Plans have been made. Uh, these are data, if you look at the Suffer website, they put it out every week telling you what is the most important hotspot for that week. And you will see that this part, Sahi Baba, as well as that North Delhi, is permanently black. That is where the maximum pollution is coming from, local pollution. Now, hotspot plans have been made. They are all about local pollution. This is about construction. This is about garbage burning, large amount. I mean, I have visited all these hotspots. Massive amounts of plastic is just lying there, which is burnt in winter. Massive amounts of waste is lying there. These are industrial areas. You know. We are so outraged when we read about these fire in this one unauthorized area. I mean, the fact is all governments have promoted illegal industry in residential areas. Okay? In fact, in this last six months, government has increased because I had taken the matter to the high court for some reason. Um, I was involved with, as an amicus, and I had asked for controls on residential polluting industries in residential areas. Government to overturn that actually increase the amount of power that is allowed for residential industry and said no permission is required from the pollution control boards. So no safety, no pollution. I don't know how many of you have visited those areas, but if you peep, but if any one of us have visions of David um, Copperfield or the Industrial Revolution, that's where you have in Delhi, over here. Same foundries, same kind of uh, working conditions, same thing that is happening under our very noses. But this is clearly something that has to improve. My last point is farmers. Episodal but important. As I said, it is one month. It comes at a time when we choke because it's the beginning of winter. It's when inversion happens. We also know that the farmers, I mean, I keep getting asked two questions by very important people. I actually get asked three, four questions. One, should I leave the city? Because my children can't breathe anymore. And I keep saying, leave, but where will you go? Because all of India is equally uh, polluted. Go abroad, maybe, that's fine. I can't, we have to stay, okay? Himachal may not be in certain parts, but that's okay. So let all of Delhi move to Himachal. It'll equally get polluted, okay? So um, the other question I keep getting asked is what purifier to buy? And I do say that whatever you buy, you will still have to breathe the air. The third question of, is why winter, which I've already explained to you. And the fourth question I keep getting asked is why, sh why does double burning hurt us now? It has been happening forever. Why is it that it is impacting us now? And there's a very simple reason for that. 
The fact is double burning has been happening forever. Mechanization has made it worse, but yes, it has been happening forever. But because the sowing period of paddy has been moved for a month, the harvesting period of paddy has also moved. When farmers harvested paddy in the past, they harvested when the retreating monsoons were happening in this part of the world. So all the stubble was taken away. We didn't know it. Stubble burning also happens in April, but you don't realize it because of the winds. Now when it happens in October, we choke. So what we are arguing, and I would, I would think, is that we need to give farmers a greater incentive so that they actually have a value in their stubble. Nobody will burn. They are already fairly impoverished. Nobody will burn if they get that value for their stubble. So either we look, we really get them the machines to plow back the stubble, which will improve the soil nutrient, and they actually become climate change warriors because the increasing the carbon in the soil is part of the challenge of climate change. And two is that you can actually get paid for stubble, which will improve their economy. But the final point I want to make is that air pollution is a great equalizer. This is one thing that the rich can't buy themselves out of. Okay? When it came to water pollution, we all cry about the Yamuna. Yamuna is dead. It has a dissolved oxygen level of zero. It is officially dead. It just hasn't been cremated. But frankly, uh, we care about it. But we flush every day. We drink bottled water. Really, we don't really, it doesn't matter. But in air, it will matter. Because by whatever air purifier, you will still have to breathe. And pollution is a brilliant mutating animal. You buy an air purifier for PM 2.5, you will have a NOx problem. You buy for NOx, you will have an ozone problem. How many machines are you going to put in? I don't know. And the, la and the other thing is that the air shed is one and has no boundaries, which means that we have to think of inclusive growth if you want sustainability. Unless that industrialist gets that fuel at a cost that they can afford. Unless the woman who burns, who cooks her food on chula, biomass gets fuel which she can afford, we will not get clean air. The only other way is that we all give up our cars, we give up our SUVs, we walk and we say we will provide the space for others to pollute. That is the only other way that we are going to get it. But, at the, but the bottom line is, without inclusive growth, we will not have sustainability. Thank you very much. OK, thank you, Dr. Harayan. I'm sure you all are bursting with uh, questions. So we'll take them. I took uh, longer than I said I would. Sorry. We'll take them uh, one by one. and. Uh, I will use my prerogative to kick off with the first please, question. Please. Uh, <laughs> so in your um, uh, presentation, there was reference to you know, the role of garbage burning and then how it should be uh, you know, basically phased out. But uh, I did not see what you call the plan for waste disposal as part of your uh, Very good thing. question. Very good that question. is the only uh, question I have. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Should I get the question related? Should, it, should I collect a few and then? I yes, I think that would be better. Yes. yes. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, most people I know, but some people I don't, so it'll be useful. Uh, great to great to hear you, Sunita. Again, it's been almost six years since I last heard you, in the same room with Erin Creer. My name is Bohidar, Natrajan Bohidar, and I do a, a small initiative we call the Tri Urban continuum, which is um, the tribal, the rural, and the urban, and how people move into cities only because they're aspirational enough to buy an SUV. They don't come to a Delhi city because they want to be on a cycle. That's exactly what they've left behind. So six years ago, I'd suggested to Sunita, and I'd said, why don't you make cycling aspirational? Well, I, I, it, was odd. It, was, it was a wrong idea because, I mean, people don't come here for that. So essentially, we'll have to t take a relook at it. But 
There is an idea that Terry came up with, and since you're all working together, Terry said, why don't we involve the RWAs in the buying of crackers? Essentially, you buy crackers by the community, so the RWA buys it, and then it gives it to families to make sure how much you're, this is just a concept. Could we do the same thing for DG sets? How powerful can you get the RWAs to be and then penalize the presidents and the secretaries and the treasurers of the RW saying, you're really working only if you're doing this work too. So I'm just wondering if, you know, between Sunit and IHC and, you know, the NCR, CSC, Terry, we can all get together and say, let's get the RW. I'm especially worried about the Gurgaon bit that you came up with. I and mean, most people left Delhi to go to Gurgaon because it was cleaner. Look at what's happened now. That's my question. Thank you. Yeah. Request uh, people to keep their questions as brief as possible because there are many people who are waiting to ask. Hi, I'm Jaydhar Gupta. I'm the founder of My Right to Breathe and uh, also I'm a victim of air pollution. So I have two questions. One, uh, since we know that we are one of the most polluted cities and, and we have uh, the largest number of you know, uh, cities in the world that are highly, highly, have, have the worst air quality. Why are we uh, limiting ourselves to measuring PM 2.5? Why not PM 1? Why not PM 0 0.5? Why not? Because, you know, the smaller, the, the smarter your pollutants get, the smaller the, you know, the nanoparticles, the emissions get as well. Uh, you know, I think we need to move quickly in that direction. And why, we, why have we not done it? My second question is, uh, the, the, the government, the central government was put in Delhi to drive uh, urbanization at one point. And, and the writings, you know, on the wall that we need reverse urbanization. Uh, is it time to put central government out of Delhi or create a new state capital because this one is unviable? Yeah, my name is GB Bagai. Uh, I just have some comments will take less than two minutes. Uh, I asked Mr. Kejriwal that, look, now there's no stubble burning. What is the cause of this high pollution? There's no difference. So he didn't talk about the winter or uh, the moisture. He said he's getting some new machine, which will indicate what exactly is the problem, uh, what which sources contribute. I don't know whether you heard of this or not. This was at the recent Hindustan Times. But the, secondly, uh, I'm wondering whether one cannot appeal to the citizens of Delhi who can afford it to contribute to buying happy cedars for the farms and those farms that take those happy cedars from us, they can maybe supply us the vegetables and cut out the middleman. Is that a possibility? And thirdly, as far as buses go, it's pathetic that instead of 12,000, we have 3,000 and their excuse is that we don't have sufficient depots to park them. Uh, and 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 the worst thing is that buses also cause a, a lot of pollution because every second bus breaks down on the road there's a huge traffic jam and the cars are idling so why not fine them heavily you know the uh, the uh, those who maintain the buses those who drive the buses i mean fine them 1 lakh for every time they stop in the middle of the road because it contributes enormously not just to pollution but to wastage of uh, the fuel thank you uh, my name is Bartel. I'm based in Himachal. I'm an environmental engineer. And uh, for the last point, I would mention there's an interesting development going on because we have been at the searching for the ground realities in Ludhiana, in Patiala, in uh, Jalandar, starting with the 15th of August. And there is a solution, uh, let's say, very much likely a solution, which is called R device. What is the meaning of R device? can also be uh, like found in the Wikipedia. Wikipedia is uh, called Environmental Issues in Delhi. Everybody can read about it. And uh, it is also having a very uh, interesting base of knowledge, what is like part of your presentation. Last thing I want to mention is the air traffic was not mentioned in yeah. the uh, presentation, which is a pity. At least it is mentioned in this um, environmental issues in Delhi. And uh, not to forget, because the amount of air traffic is ever increasing, ever increasing is the pollution. Thanks. 
my name is manish agarwal i work for quality council of india qci actually i want to know that uh, what do you mean by when you say that we do not have air shed for 80% of population in delhi and secondly on affordability delhi government has made dtc dims cluster buses free for females and they wanted to do the same with metro but as he said that it will kill uh, metro and it is not uh, financially viable it will not be financially viable for metro so what is your uh, i mean uh, 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 option for uh, making public transport affordable in delhi how can it be made okay. affordable and thirdly recently i hear that construction ban has been lifted or partially lifted and uh, de de uh, this delhi gurgaon Jaipur stretch of national highway is under repairs. That repair is pending at Hero and Rajog, and it's ca causing traffic uh, uh, choke points. So now they are leave that uh, it has been lifted, and the, that stretch pending uh, uh, repairs can be now now be done. So what do you want to say about that? Thank you. Should I finish these? Well, a lot of very good questions. Absolutely okay. So first, very important question. I think you know you've really the, sorry. Let me. So you've hit the nail on the head. Actually, you know it's strange. Also, when we began our work on air pollution and air pollution work of CSC has been for the last now two decades, we never thought garbage would be part of it. You know, it was vehicles, industry, fuel, and all the rest. It's now that we are looking at local. When we started doing that map, as you see, of those very high sources of pollution, places with high sources, we discovered that garbage burning is a very important part of it. And also the latest suffer emission inventory is suggesting garbage. Now, CSE's uh, program on garbage and solid waste, we have a lot of work that we have done, essentially looking at bylaws, segregation, uh, how to uh, incentivize segregation. I mean, garbage burning is a municipal function where we need a plan, we have a plan for Delhi. And again, my request to all of you would be, please don't fall into the trap of saying plan nahi hai. Plan hai. Please say implement karo plan ko. Kyunki cap is there, garbage ka bhi plan hai. There's a detailed plan made for the uh, rules for bylaws for, uh, for SWM. There's a ward by ward plan made in terms of how that garbage will be segregated, where it will be taken. It's not getting implemented. So I think it's very important for us and from the pollution perspective, what is coming out very clearly is that burning of garbage is becoming a very major source of pollution in winter. And it is something that we need to stop and we can't stop it unless you have a long-term action plan. Because, yeah, you can go there with a danda and say, ki mat burn karo, magar wo aaj nahi karega to kal kar dega. Kal nahi karega to parso kar dega. How much are you going to be able to stop it? You have to be able to segregate the garbage, recycle it, and, and, and deal with garbage. And that has to be that we, and all of us are responsible, all of us. How many of us segregate? How many of us segregate at home? How many of us check that what we segregate, does it go with the municipality as segregated garbage? I mean, there are a lot of very good colonies in Delhi now, in Gurgaon now, who are actually doing this at their local colony level. So that they're not even leaving it to the, uh, to the RWA or even to the, uh, they're leaving it to the RWA, but they're not leaving it to the municipality. I think it is something that we will all have to be part of. This is a solution that is in our hands. Public transport is not in our hands. I mean, frankly, I can say I don't want to take my car, but I can't till there's public transport. But on garbage, we can definitely be part of the solution. On the Terry RWA cracker issue, I think it's a very good idea. I, I mean, my understanding is it is the RWAs and the developers who are actually doing this in Gurgaon, but I will, I, I, this issue has just come to my attention. I'm going to spend more time looking at it, finding solutions for it so that by next year we can either have Gurgaon in darkness completely or we can have them off DG generator sets. It's going to be, I mean, I definitely, we definitely need to work on one or the other. Um, yeah, one year, one year, by next winter. Um, as far as, Jay, your question is concerned, I, it's above my pay grade, this moving the central government wherever. It's completely above my pay grade. I've heard this forever, okay? 
एंड नाउ वी आर दिस इज नॉट समथिंग आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन वो बहुत बड़े बड़े लोग बैठे हैं करें भाई मुझे गार्बेज बर्निंग के ऊपर बात करनी है मुझे जो बहुत छोटी छोटी चीज़ों के ऊपर बात करनी है एंड दैट्स वेयर आई वुड लाइक टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट आई नो द सोर्सेज लेट्स डील विद द पोल्यूशन यू मूव डेली यू मूव इट आउट आई मीन यू मूव इट आउट वेयर विल यू मूव इट टू गुड़गांव गाजियाबाद फरीदाबाद नोएडा they are equally polluted the air shed and somebody asked me this question of the air shed the air shed is really the area where you have local for most of the year other than the external um 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 uh, external stubble burning that comes in you have an air shed of the region the air shed is not just delhi you can't you know sarad nahi hai delhi ke upar i mean ideally you should be able to do these plastic towers and say this is the boundary of delhi this is the air shed of delhi this is the air shed of gurgaon this is the air shed of noida but it doesn't the air moves between the regions which is where when you look at it today one of our decisions to move industry out of delhi and it's moved to sahibabad gurgaon and faridabad then all the pollution is coming back to delhi and all of delhi's industry has moved to unauthorized areas in delhi which are outside the ambit of the pollution control boards so these are some things that we have to learn that this is not the way to do pollution management for the future we made mistakes we all need to admit we made mistakes so that we can change it for the future um um i you know i've heard this um, uh, machines that delhi government is buying for the last 3 years i hope they come quickly because we need to know the sources so we can deal with it i know the sources from the three studies that exist i'm prepared to deal with those till they find new sources they find new sources we deal with them i'm not waiting for science to catch up or the ultimate science to catch up so we'll wait for it i think your idea of the happy cedars is brilliant i mean it would be a wonderful idea and a gesture in fact i suggested that we should all the people who drive diesel suvs okay should have a dund on them and they should pay for one happy cedar each okay um it was not an idea that went down very well as you can imagine okay bus i agree with you hb i agree with you if you can please incentivize push that technology would be wonderful on the air shed just i've explained this is the air shed and the fact is we have no more air shed space left it's polluted the roads are congested the air is polluted with 20% of the people in cars which means that you'll need to find a different way for mobility um and on the construction ban yes it has been lifted and that at least those roads can be repaired during the daytime now not during night time because the ban is still on for night time so during day work can happen is that okay next round of questions ha huh. apne aap ko introduce bhi kar denge zara ha I am Professor Sudhir Kumar Jain, uh, for a long time in IIT Delhi and now at JNU in the oh, yes, management yes. department. Of course. Huh. Uh, uh, one observation which I have is that uh, in China there are some uh, towers are there they ah. attract and that kind of a thing I think uh, can be a good source the of. The court has. I'll yeah. explain that. Huh, no. The second thing that uh, I have found that uh, there is mud on both sides of the road. which when the more vehicles go some vehicle on the left go and they pollute so much dust is in the air and similar to this when the brooming is done with the long bamboo with the, you know big uh, the thing on the roads the that uh, cleaning of the road you know makes so much of dust in the air which doesn't settle down in less than a few hours then uh, uh, one very good thing you said republic of khanpur <laughs> i have been on that road sometimes and there is no traffic management no camera no this thing but It's you know i'm so happy our yeah. office goes through the republic of khanpur yeah. because when i come to our office in habitat center i would believe delhi is wonderful yeah. thankfully i go to uh, tuklakabad institutional yeah. area for four days in a week and i know the mess of delhi yeah. i yeah. really yeah. believe the idea that somebody gave jay gave that move delhi out i think what will be really nice is to bomb lutai in delhi move all the very big people to places where they would see the reality of, the reality delhi. of delhi the problem in delhi today is that most of the people who mm. live in lutai and i call mm. it lutai openly it's not lutans <laughs> it's lutai in delhi If you live in Lutai in Delhi, you really believe where is the pollution? 
what is the problem where is garbage burning what are you people talking about no right to walk are hamare yahan to granite walkways hain kya baat kar rahe hain aap log hey delhi ke andar to sab kuch hai wo granite walkways pure khanpur mein dal denge to theek ho jayega ha bilkul wahan kahan dalenge now this uh, what i went into this more in more detail and all that i found that the traffic police uh is very happy to have the cameras everything chalans and all this thing where the more educated people live because we will comply to their this thing i got two chalans for traffic light jumping which i have never done in my lifetime so you know but who will go and fight and all that thing so i can okay, let me pay they are wrong i am right still i pay because i don't have time to go and you know spend half day in fighting out the case now see where such like khanpur republic there you know total traffic violation there is you know people go wrong side there one kilometer i take about 20 minutes to cross and i am you gave the figure uh, 90% i think 90% of the road space is occupied by the cars so if one kilometer i cross in 20 minutes I am occupying the road for more duration. नहीं बिल्कुल बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं आप. तो ये कम हो जाएगा अगर एक traffic can manage better. आपकी बात बिल्कुल सही है. So these are couple of points. हाँ. Thank you. I have that gentleman at the back. Uh, he has had his hand up for a long time. Can I give it to him? Sure. Sorry. Sure. The gentleman at the back. He has had his hand up for a while. Sorry. We are talking. Uh, Satinda Narang is my name. We are talking about pedestrian walking. the pedestrian crossings are ill designed they are not properly designed the cut and the median is somewhere else and the crossing is somewhere else bilkul. and ends up on a barrier bilkul our Aapki pavement baat, engineering is zero in japan you can uh, cycle on the pavement and also cross the road at the pedestrian crossing here we don't even make it easy to walk bilkul bilkul sorry i took the mic away from this gentleman here i'm sorry Your My name is uh, just, Alok no, no, Gupta, no, no. and I'm the founder of Invecologic. Um, it's a synthesis of environment and economic logic. Oh, nice. And my question comes from that perspective. Okay. But before that, always a pleasure to listen to you. You know, talk about these issues, uh, uh, Dr. Narayan. Um, so this is in reference to Jay's point on uh, why don't we talk so much about uh, PM one one as well? Uh, and this ties up with um, a remark that you had on. coal could be less polluting than pet coke but only relatively in absolute context it is very polluting so if we draw parallels between this and cng versus you know uh, petrol so cng is at the end of the day it's definitely less polluting but it's also a, a hydrocarbon that we are burning of course so when we are putting in so many so much resources and, and infrastructure to have you know such a big roll out which was very successful uh we do have alternatives as well so what? i would like to know your what are the alternatives the the fuel cells electric vehicles ah. so uh you know looking into the future how practical it is yeah. going to be no i will i'd love to answer that right. good right good very yeah, nice that's my question okay <laughs> i think we should move a little with this side the lady at the back i don't think we've had enough women talk <laughs> <laughs> Hi my name is Shama I'm a lawyer huh. and uh, I want to talk about the role of judiciary and uh, with regard to judiciary there have been a lot of important orders that have come both on solid waste management and with air pollution what has happened over time there have been too many orders and sometimes I'm wondering if that is causing the enforcement problem and i would like your comments on that on whether there is any coherency in the way these orders from the judiciary are coming okay thank you i have three very serious questions to anyone uh, should i how long sunit do you want us to stay it's late o'clock it's supposed to be till 8 but we could <laughs> carry on till 8:15 or 8:20 perhaps so we should i should get a chance so let me answer these very important so smog tower was the first let me answer that ha huh. My name is Naresh Kumar Malik. I have been dealing in coal since 1964. Hmm. After that, I trade, uh, shifted to petco, which you have banned now. I shifted in 2001. You're going to ban coal also, very soon. Yeah, I know, I know. But you see, I'm not giving up. I know, but you see, the feedback from the industry we should have. 
the industry was suffering a lot you see because of the ban on the coal as well as the pet coke care anyway i mean after ban on pet coke they started using coal it was when it was not used you see there was lot of idle laboring production loss they could not meet their target export targets Bil all the textile industry was suffering badly I know. badly oh, for absolutely. that actually regarding you see stubble burning hmm. there are number of machines available which can collect the stubble of the farmers and they don't need to uh, burn it but you see the central government had given 697 crores to the punjab government for giving subsidy to the farmers only 19 crores out of that was disbursed and few farmers got it it is in the paper i have i, I can Achha. give you the cutting nahi wo court ke andar unne figures diye hain zyada hai to wo maybe more sarkar ye kaam kar rahi hai aisi baat nahi hai sarkar ne diya i can show you the videos you see Haan. where you don't need to burn Thik. the stubble theek and the stubble can be accumulated into a rolls and that can go to the paper mill or that can go to the gutta factory so that problem can be solved easily okay. but the problem is that people are not investing in that because it is required only for 2 months malik sir and I've for the 10th month everybody's questions right. let me answer those three very important questions forgive me let me answer three very serious questions and just I the last one you have to increase the ridership of metro yeah, absolutely absolutely that you're, is only by the connectivity no no you are absolutely here. right everything has to be done um let me answer these three very important questions and then we can sort of maybe sunit needs to do this regularly and in non winter times okay <laughs> we'll see what happens then okay you see there will be few yeah. questions and few people so smog tower very important question i was asked uh, supreme court has also shown a great interest in it now let's be clear all the data that government has put together and in fact they brought to court also the scientists from iit mumbai who is developing these smog towers they also have consulted the university of minnesota which has built the smog tower in uh, shenzhen or wherever in somewhere in china is that there is no evidence that these are working okay and the fact is that uh, it's a very simple thing i mean there are two principles let me just explain it so there is one principle which the mumbai professor is wanting to experiment with which is ground level cleaning which is that i will take the air put it through filter it's a big filter think about it like what you would have at home you filter the air and then you put it out so if ihc for instance had one of those machines at a industrial scale you could get around the ihc that cleaner air to some extent but it would still have to interact with the dirtier air on top you would still have inversion happening now therefore there is very little evidence that this actually works the other the minnesota example uh, build uh, one the smog tower which china is built one is a different kind of machine you pump the air through and then you clean it and you pump it out so it's a 10 km supposed radius now what the scientists have very clearly said is that we don't have any idea whether once you pump that cleaner air in a very dirty air shed on top whether it's actually going to lead to any difference now the cost of this will be huge and the number of machines that smog towers that you will require in just the city of delhi are over 400 500 is what i'm being told so you will basically have um, i mean so i think there needs to be some more reality check on these technology fixes we've lost a few years last year the delhi government had a gun system by which they were um, they were experimenting with a gun to clean up uh, the air basically push water out now the problem with that is if you push water out you increase the moisture you increase the moisture it traps the particulates it actually adds to the problem so that so that didn't work then we tried on an experiment of putting giant particulate uh, trap in um, bus stops if you remember purifiers and bus stops that didn't work i think it's time we in delhi and this is really for all of us because governments will look for quick fix techno quick fix we need to be very clear these are not the solutions we need to stay focused on the real solution let them do all this reality will sink in i don't bother about all this i need to stay focus on when how do we fix gurgaon's electricity issue that's what we need to stay focused on how do we make sure that all the diesel auto rickshaws in gurgaon convert to battery or 
get phased out. Those are where the solutions are going to lie, not in some techno fix, okay? Then um, my second big question is on electric vehicles. I'm sorry, I'm just choosing the big ones out of this, electric vehicles. Now, I totally agree with you. I think the fact is we need to move out of fossil fuels. Now, the only way that electric vehicles actually are cleaner than the BS6 fuel efficient vehicles today as when you generate electricity from renewable sources, okay? So you also have to understand that right now the challenge is not electric vehicles, it is converting your generation to cleaner sources. Because otherwise, electric vehicles are very good for local pollution, but you are only moving the problem of pollution from the car to the power point, power plant. Now, I, listen, I'm very practical. I, in my lifetime, I don't know how many more years I have to live, I am determined we should have clean air. So I'm looking for solutions which can work today. If gas can work today, I'm going to push gas, okay? I'm very clear about this. I mean, and I'm, op I mean, anybody else, you're all equally powerful, you should put a, push some other solution. I am basically going to push something that can happen in the next two years. And as I see it, gas for this region is an intermediate solution. Electricity generated from gas is the better solution. I would like to convert all coal-based power plants to gas because that will immediately bring down both the carbon intensity as well as the pollution intensity of the, of the generation of power itself. And of course, the other thing that we need to do is to build large fleets of public transport vehicles on electric vehicles. So I'm not a, pro we are not, CSC is not pushing for cars to move to electric vehicles. That can happen. I mean, they're so expensive, none of us can afford them in any case. But we can definitely push buses. And that's where state subsidy has to happen. That's where we are pushing the FAME project saying, push and pay for public transport. Because a very good question that was asked of me, which I wasn't able to answer is, how do you make public transport affordable? Through state subsidy. I very strongly believe that we will require good subsidy to make, and I know this doesn't work well with a lot of market economists, but you know, we need clean air. My last point was on the judiciary. Now, I, you know, we are so desperate right now, all of us. We will take whatever works, okay? So I think we've all reached that stage where I'm not in an academic debate. Koi bhi de de bhai, de to de yaar. Mujhe kya farak padta hai, judiciary de, ya wo sarkar de, kejriwal de, modi de, koi bhi de. I mean, for me, I'm agnostic. I need, we need clean air. Now, there is no doubt that the judiciary, partly because it is able to give these decisions, um, has been able to give more stronger decisions. I'll tell you, we went to, we, I took the matter of Petco to government first. I got nowhere. Took it to judiciary in December of 2016. Government of India opposed us for two years. All data from all scientific institutions was put together to say that pet coke was clean. Okay, We fought that, fought that, fought that. We finally got the judiciary to nudge the government to say either ban it or we will ban it. That's when government banned it. Okay, Then for a year the import of pet coke matter went on. And finally the judge in frustration said either you ban it in the next 15 days or I will ban it. 15 days went by, it didn't happen, the judge banned it. Okay. Now, we've got a massive reduction in pollution because of the because of the uh, you know ban on pet coke. We need a ban on coal. Now, if you can get it from judiciary, I will take it. I think the big question you've asked, which is really the structural issue, is two things. One, I find judiciary often doesn't have the technical know-how to be able to take very contested but very technically difficult decisions. And two, once they have given a decision, there is very little follow-up on. Now, this is where I must say this authority that I'm a member of, EPCA, we have kept our role only on those two issues, okay? 
I have also tried not to get into being uh, the policeman or going around shutting things, all the rest. You know, and we have kept our role just for two. One, to give technical reports to the judiciary on what needs to be done. So technical support. Now that's where when we gave the pet coke, it was contested. There are seven reports. I know that because I was just writing the eighth report today, okay? Seven reports we have given in the matter of two years to fight and get that ban imposed. Now, because each one of these decisions is highly contested. I mean, you've heard this, when you ban pet coke, industry is furious, everybody, everybody, you know, good science is very easy to generate, okay? Now, we need to be able to contest it, put it forward, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, but that's been one big role of EPCA. And that has meant that we've got orders. I mean, we got the Metro phase four cleared. We gave the report on the first week of April, um, of July. We got the order from court uh, in the third week of July saying that Metro phase four will happen. That the squabble between the Delhi government and the central government, we will decide later. Metro starts tomorrow, okay? Two years that project was held up. It was a technical report given to court, got a decision. The second thing that we have maintained is that once you get a decision from court, get it implemented. So we got a decision on RFID. First, we got a decision on the ECC for trucks. So we went around getting it implemented, became difficult. Then we went back to court and said, listen, give us an RFID. We have money. We have a thousand crores under the ECC fund, which is under the court's uh, jurisdiction. So we said, give the SDMC, not us, give the South Delhi Municipal Corporation 150 crores to set up this RFID system for all entry points into Delhi. It's taken us two years of weekly monitoring to get that system done. But the system is now ready. So you need to monitor implementation of the court order and that's where I think to some extent we need to find better and smarter institutional systems so that you can get technical solutions discussed through an independent body. I mean even today I was looking at a matter of pet coke and there are three petitions that have gone to court which are clearly, clearly have somebody has been paid and what is very sad to me they always the front is an NGO now okay and I can smell it I know they've been paid what oh, domestic pet coke lobby versus the imported pet coke lobby the steel industry versus the aluminium industry the cement industry versus this okay now the good thing is we don't get paid by anyone so we can, to some extent, you need to have some independent ability to be able to look at these and say, what is the way ahead? It's still a recommendation to court. It's ultimately going to be fought in an open courtroom. And on, on the other side, I don't know about you, but on the other side, they're always the most expensive lawyers. Okay, most expensive lawyers. You could have a UPA cabinet meeting in the courtroom. I think we should end. I think, no, uh, I, know I think we should end. There are a number of burning <laughs> questions uh, still left. It is my unpleasant task to impose a guillotine. Doc Dr. Narayan is still here on a bilateral no, basis. No, 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 I'm leaving. <laughs> you can try your to, luck directly. I have a report to send to court tomorrow morning. Rude, your point is valid. I have to say what I have written. You have points I have written. Bilkul sahi ka hai aapne. You can give the vote of thanks. Okay, this will have to be the positively last question. Is it a question or a comment? No question, but Madam did not address that particular issue. That's why I want to say. Very quickly, very quickly, please. We are well over our time. Yeah, my name is Arvind Padi. I'm from Ekri Saad. Madam, you told about the reasons for stubble burning, but you did not blame the farmers. I'm very happy on that. But you also told to incentivize them. But you did not address the root cause. Okay. The root cause is the power subsidy and Punjabi farmers growing paddy. They should switch I over to some other crop you. and the subsidy, it goes to I the rich totally farmers. I totally agree Thank with you. you. I totally agree with you. But this is what we are saying for many years. If we all eat rice, then 
तब देखी जाएगी और अगर एम एस पी राइस के लिए नहीं मिले और एम एस पी मिले मिलेट के लिए तब होगा कुछ थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच आई नो देर सो मेनी अदर क्वेश्चन बट आई थिंक रियली नीड टू स्टॉप देर uh thank you very much indeed dr narayan for an absolutely scintillating session uh, it always we know it we expect it from you and you always deliver thank you so much indeed and we do hope to have you back more frequently i hope it won't be a two year gap next time no, no. yes and thank you very much to alok and to ikria for uh, having uh, uh, well, thank you and i'm jointly organized this session thank you alok ji thank yeah. you very much thank you thank you very much thank all of you for your deep interest in the subject and your deep involvement